Welcome to uh, training camp. It's uh, summer's gone by quickly. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, I just wanted to walk through a little bit about camp. Uh, I've got a couple of player updates um, and then open up to any questions you have. So we will have 67 players in camp. Um, medicals, physicals um, took place today and are taking place as we as as we go. We'll break into three teams, um, three groups, and there are, you know, for the first three days there'll be um, maybe some movement between those groups. Um, and then we get into day four will be a split squad game and then um, you know there could be some activity after after we get through three or four days of camp. Um, I do have a couple of player updates before coming into camp. Oliver Shillington uh, will not um, will not be attending the start of camp here. Oliver is dealing with a personal family issue. Um, I think it's important to say this is not um, substance related, substance abuse related. Um, he is dealing with a personal issue, a family issue. The organization is uh, in fully in full support of Oliver. And I would just ask media members and, and, and people alike um, to give Oliver some privacy in this time right now. Um, but, uh, and, and this will be the last we talk about it until I have any other further updates, but uh, we're fully supportive of Oliver and uh, been in touch with him, um, but we just want to give him some time right now. Uh, additionally, uh, Andrew Manjapani, um, he tweaked he had a tweak uh, during some summer skates. We don't anticipate it's going to be anything. Um, it's going to be. We anticipate it's going to be very short term. But he is skating on his own right now with our, our uh, medical staff, our skills, our skills and development people. Um, and then he he probably will rejoin the group here in the next couple of days. So those two player updates. Um, and then uh, with that, we're excited to get going. And uh, any questions you might have? Because you're all busily typing. <laughs> it's a lot of information. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, I guess Brett Ritchie signed, signed a one-year deal, one way, two way. Has there been an announcement yet, Eric? Uh, we no, anticipate that there will be a contract coming until it's done, it's never done. But uh, we anticipate um, that Brett will be signed here later today. I just saw his name on the roster. Yeah. Yes, he is on the roster. He'll be attending camp. No, we, 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 we anticipate that we'll have something formal here in short order. I guess in general, uh, after everything that's unfolded over the summer and you know how the teams uh, evolved the last few years, how do you feel about uh, I guess your organizational depth, especially in that forward group where you have you know some some guys at the AHL level who had really good seasons last year. You have some guys at PTOs. You have some new faces. Like how do you how do you feel about the the mix of that group? Well, we'll see, Ryan. I mean, that's what training camp's for, right? I know, you know, we've got, I think we've got some, we've got lots of bodies. Um, how well you play determines how much depth you have, right? So um, we've got some, you know, we've got some players in here on PTOs that are looking to earn jobs. As you said, we've had some players that, that had really good seasons in the American League last year. Um, you know, you get to training camp every year and everybody's like, well, um, you know, is there a spot for this guy? I want to make it real clear. Uh, whether you're 18 or 28, play well, there'll be a spot. You know, we've shown that in the past. I remember Dylan Dubé's training camp and Yusuf Alamaki's training camp. There was no spots, uh, apparently. But they were on the opening day roster because they played their way on the roster. Um, good teams, it's got to be hard. to. I've said it many times. It's like a club. An exclusive club is hard to get into. This is the NHL. Nothing is given. So whether you're PTO, whether you're an existing player under contract, whether you're uh, an American League player last year, a young player, old player, we're looking to dress the best lineup. We're trying to win, and uh, if you can help us win, um, you're on the team. You talked about the roller coaster off season. Now it's just kind of time to see where things fit now. But other markets are saying that you know you changed the tide of this NHL off season. Is it good to have so many eyeballs from around the NHL on Calgary and have that stage and spotlight as the season opens? Well, the summer, 
<laughs> this idea of winning the summer is a load of crap, I think. I just, you, 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 you try to win in the winter. Um, the summer really is irrelevant. <laughs> um, so we like our team coming in. Um, last year's last year, it's in the rearview mirror. We got a lot of questions to answer. Like who, who we've had, we've had significant turnover when you look at the, you know, sort of the top of the food chain. And so where do they fit? How do they fit? Um, that process starts tomorrow. So, um, you know, I, I, I've said it before, I'm excited because the players are excited, but all this talk over the summer is just that. I, usually when they talk about having a great summer, you know, we're more worried about having a great winter um, and spring. But uh, I'm excited to see the group, but we've got lots of questions to answer. And the, this camp is really, really important as they all are, but to sort everything out, you know, from our defense and, you know, we've got lots of players. We've got lots of players there, and I think competition is good. Um, it should be hard to make the team. Um, you know, we talk about depth in the blue line. Like I said, you only have depth if they play well. Um, but I'm excited to see where all the pieces fit. And I know Daryl and the staff have been working at that for a while. So I'm like you. I'm, I'm interested to see how this thing goes. Brad, you touched on the defense just now. Just the idea of that questions and maybe a bit of a log jam depending on how you look at it. How do you look at what's going on in that blue line with so many guys in one-way contracts? Well, I'm not so worried about the one-way contracts. Um, again, it comes back to, I think, that's why I'm really excited to see the preseason games, right? Like, people are going to, you know, there's certain guys that you, you're trying to see. I guess it's it's, it's twofold, Ryan, who, who plays with who, like, who f you, do, you never know where chemistry is going to be. Um, so sorting out that, and then, you know, there's some new faces. Um, we've got some younger players that are, you know, they've got to they've got to push the door down. It's their time now. So um, the contract situation is irrelevant. It's, it's the play situation that matters. Um, the idea was to come in here with a lot of depth. And again, you're always, numbers doesn't mean depth, you know. Uh, playing well means depth. And, and I think we got lots of guys that, come in great shape um, there's only X amount of players that you can dress so I'm, I'm excited to see the competition and I think we'll have a lot of it and does that maybe speak to the PTOs as well on the outside not that you focus on what everybody's saying out of here but just the idea that there's some surprise and some banter about who you brought in on PTOs and and that type of thing but I, I would imagine this is all part of your plan to have a pretty healthy camp yeah I think you, to, to get where you want to get to you got to have competition you got to have depth you know, uh, the players that are coming on PTOs are, you know, they're players that have been established in the league. Um, they're hungry. You know, they they look at this as an opportunity for them, and and uh, everybody's trying to win a job here. And when you when you when you try to have a good team, you should have a lot of competition. If it's easy to get in, probably not that good of a team. So there should be a respectful under uncomfortableness. Um, is what I like to say um, of, of the process of putting camp together and it's by design and again if you're good enough I don't care where you played last year I don't care how old you are um, Daryl will ultimately make that decision um, but I think we're going to have competition at every position. Brad, you mentioned uh, chemistry just a moment ago like I wonder to a certain extent you had a little bit of that last year with new faces um, but you have it again this year. Is that something that you guys think a little bit about? Is it kind of just upon the players to develop that, or how do you kind of think about chemistry? Yeah, I think you start, you know, for the most part, the group's been here for the last couple of weeks skating, so you develop a, the relationships and the, the bond, but chemistry, you got to get in and see live bullets. You just don't know, right? We can all, we probably all put our lines together on a napkin, right? Usually that lasts 10 minutes, and then you don't know where chemistry is going to come from, right? Um, you know, so that's why you go through camp. I mean, that's why you play all the games. That's why you go through the practices. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm being perfectly honest with you. Daryl and I have talked about it all summer, but we don't know. I mean, you just don't know where it fits and matches. You have an idea where you think maybe skill sets fit, but ultimately until you get out, until you get out in the ice, until you get in, into competitive situations, we'll see. But I think the group's been together, you know, for a while. They've built, they've built the bond. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tight-knit group. There's a lot of guys that have been here before are returning. The new guys have fit in, but, you know, that's different from on-ice chemistry. So we'll start that tomorrow.
You're still in the market for a winger, uh, either by way of another PTO ad or or some other way. Um, we'll see, um, Eric. I want to see how. I you mean, know, we got the group here, so you want to see how that plays out. I think if you look at our group right now, in all honesty, you, you know, I want to. That top nine is still kind of a work in progress, I think, for us. So how everything's going to work out in an ideal world, you know, with somebody on the right side. Again, there's opportunities for guys here. I want to see how our players perform first. Um, and like I said, we've had young players here. We'll see. Um, it's it's up to them. Um, but I don't think anybody's done tinkering. But you know, we've got a lot of bodies here to evaluate. Um, that process started for some of the young guys in Penticton. Now they'll jump into here. And we've got some PTO guys. So I, I kind of want to get a handle on what we've got here. Let Daryl get a handle on what we got here. But you're always, you know, you're always sniffing around probably. You mentioned the fact that there are a lot of questions you have to have answered about the roster. It's mm -hmm. been mentioned with the amount of attention that's been thrust upon you. And with some of the key players of your nucleus who are either almost 30 or a little over 30, naturally there's going to be a lot of pressure thrust upon the organization to win. I'm just curious in your own description, What's it been like feeling that pressure to be in this win now mode? Well, that's a lot of that win now is you're always trying to win, Julian. First of all, welcome to Calgary. Hopefully, you got moved in. <laughs> I'll tell you the guys to stay and the gals to stay away from. Um, the uh, I mean, that's the job, right? So there's no there's no new pressure this year as opposed to last year as opposed to five years ago. Um, we're looking to get into camp here um, and worry about day one and build a team. Now you're trying to build a team. So all the other outside noise and all the rest of it, um, we don't really pay a lot of attention to it. You got to be singularly focused if we've got to, you know, tomorrow is day one of building a team. And there's a process that you go through in that. It doesn't just happen. And the fact, you know, last year's over with. Whatever you did last year doesn't mean you're going to win 20 games this year, 10 games doesn't mean you're going to win a game. You got to have to start the whole process over again. And uh, and that's that's the mentality of the group. We're not worried about anything other than having a good first day and seeing how everything starts to fit here. With that, though, what's your own personal expectation for this group? What's the measuring stick for success versus failure once the season's done? Well, number one is our goal is to be a playoff team. Right? You start every year. You can have all sorts of aspirations. Number one, it's extremely hard to be a playoff team in this league. <clears throat> and whatever you've done and whatever your resume tells you, you still have to go play the games. So we sat in here last year and I think there was very little expectation of this team on the outside. Um, the team had a good year. Uh, we start that whole process over again. So number one, you have to do anything in this league, you have to be a playoff team and you have to earn your way in it. You know, you don't get there any other way is you have to earn it over 82 games and that's, 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 that's our goal right now. Brad, what are you the competitive and otherwise uh, advantages of having your AHL team in the same city? Yeah, you know what, Don? It, it's, um, it's been something we've talked about ever since I got here. I think there's, especially in a cap world, um, easier access to your players um, is number one. Number two is just easier. You, you can see them. You know, you see them on a more regular basis. You know, Brad Pascal um, and our development team and our and our and our um, you know coaching staff down there sees them every day when they're in Stockton. The fact that you know the management now can have access to see them practice every day, I think, is a huge piece. Um, so access, um, you know, our ability to be around them more often, our development team to be around them daily, and then the other thing, Donna, which I think is important, especially in a Canadian market, is they get to. You know, they get to sort of live what it's like in a Canadian market. And it's different playing in a Canadian market, though, that, you know, people know what's going on with the team. And I think that's all part of the development process. You know, being, you know, sort of, even when you're with the Wranglers, you see what's going on in Calgary every day, and that prepares you. Because when you sometimes, you know, come out of junior college, you're a, go to the American <coughs> League, and you're, you're not in that pressure cooker. You know, it can it can slap you in the face. So those are the three things that we looked at in terms of um, number one is just made for how do we what's the best way to develop our players, and we think the having the team in Calgary has got a lot of benefits. Organizationally, is it complicated though having like the three hockey teams all playing out of the same city, the three teams out of under the Flames yeah. umbrella? Yeah, the trainers. I have made no friends with the training staff. <laughs> um, 
So it's, it's going to be a challenge, um, logistically, you know. Now, now what, what the Wranglers will do for the most part is they're going to be based out at Windsport. That'll be their, they'll practice, they'll pregame skate, they'll, they'll come to the Dome to play games and go back to their, you know, back to their cave. Um, so no question, game nights, and it's not just the games, it's sometimes you got two teams playing and then you may have a doubleheader and then you got NHL teams that are waiting to get in the room. So there's some logistical nightmares. Um, but at the end of the day, we made the decision, what's the best development model for our, for our players? And that's, that's what we decided on. Brad, uh, this time last year we were talking about two stars going into the final seasons of their contracts. And this year it's you and Daryl. Is there any update on you and Daryl like, entering the final season of the period deal in the future? Nope. No update. Uh, won't uh, really we'll address it today and then move on as we did with uh, any player contracts that to me it's a non-issue um, we're focused on we're focused on getting going in camp um, but it you know I put to rest that there's no you know is he going to do something to you know crazy because he's in the last year of his contract uh, no he's not um, so we will we'll deal with that when it's at the appropriate time but Right now, the focus is just getting going here. You uh, last season, the the club didn't have a captain. Went with the leadership group, and it seemed to, to work pretty well. You mentioned uh, you know you're beginning the team building process for this coming season. Does how things went last year with no formal captaincy change how you approach this year, or is it sort of something you have to go year by year and see how it goes? It's a good question, Ryan. I will see. I mean, Daryl and I talked about it a little bit. I think. You, that's got to play out. I don't think you just name a captain just to <coughs> check it off a list. Um, I think those things just we'll we'll see how everything goes. And uh, you know we've got some new people in here. I think number one, our number one priority is just to get everybody together and get the group formed. And like I said, start building the team. The what I enjoy is the is the team building process. Um, and then we'll see, obviously, I think we've got lots of strong leaders on this group. Um, we have to let this play out, and that's something we'll talk about you know, during and throughout camp. Uh, also, any update on uh, Chris Tanev? Yeah, Chris will, um, Chris will, I haven't talked to the docs. Um, they're going through their medicals right now, but we anticipate everything's gonna be good. Chris will be on the ice um, with the group tomorrow, and then we'll just, you know, we'll, we, we may probably not play him in preseason games initially, you know, uh, the first little bit of preseason games, but we anticipate that he's going to be full goal here starting tomorrow. To follow up on Ryan's previous question yeah. about the captaincy, if throughout looking at the roster and the team building, would you and Darrow be open to the possibility that maybe you give the C to one of your new guys that came in this offseason? You know what, Julian, I'm not, I think those are all questions that, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to anything, right? Like I said, I think you, you have to, sometimes we, we rush to say, okay, let's do this. Let's, let's just see how things work out, right? Um, let's see how the group dynamic works. Let's just see how this all plays out. Um, but I'm, you know, like I said, that's something Daryl and I will talk about, but I'm not opposed to anything. Let's just see how the focus, and really it's not, it's not, a, it's not a priority for us, I think. Uh, you know, making sure making sure everything fits is, is the priority. So we'll see how how things work over the course of the next little bit. Which GM would win fitness testing? <laughs> Which GM? It's a good one. Um, might have to go with Sweens. Sweens may be fitter now than he was. He was fit as a player. He's pretty fit now. Good? Everybody good? Who finished last? <laughs> You've got a 15 person tie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good to see everybody. Bye.